So let's see, we've done Templin Institute and we've done One Mind Syndicate. Now we're doing Eons of Battle. Yes, the female Space Marine argument continues. Just when you expect it to lay down and be gone, always comes back. Now let me move this a little bit so you can see. Ah, okay. That should be it. Female Space Marines, let's do it. I want to talk about the controversy, the phenomenon, the absolute meme that girl Space Marines are. I want to build some female Space Marines for myself, and I want to talk about my solution if Games Workshop ever wants to add Lady Space Marines into the lore. Yeah, it's already... I can already tell this one's going to be an interesting one. But uh, I like how the title is like... Uh, you might not see it because it's weird, but let me solve that for you. Discussing, building and discussing female space marines. Problem? Uh, it's not the building that's the problem, but... Let's see. I'm not expecting it to get any better. I'm expecting things to get worse. But that's the whole point of this whole argument. It's never about getting better. It's a lot easier than you think. You see? What, what was I saying? We'll just skip the intro, because... So what is a female space marine? Well, nothing. They don't exist. Games Workshop never made them. Exactly. Hey, it's a good start for the video. They never existed. Games Workshop never made them. Point. So what is a space marine? Well, a space marine is a... What is a woman? Yeah, I, I know there's no connection here and stuff, but... No, uh, I'm expecting things to get worse and I'm really prepared for that. Let's see if I can make an hour out of 13 minutes. A power fantasy. Possibly the greatest power fantasy. Through the power of super science, a human, male, is stuffed full of extra organs and this somehow turns them into a giant, hulking beast super soldier. Eh, a few details are... It's oversimplified, and I think I know where this is going. It's oversimplified just to make the whole problem seem more... Insignificant, more, you know, how should I say this properly? Uh, it's made to, to seem like it's not that big of a deal. Who is so powerful they can beat the crap out of almost every other fictional character ever created. I didn't say that. I could have said that. They can surely beat the, <laughs> the Stormtroopers. Probably also Captain America, but I didn't say that. He did. Oh, and by the way, Games Workshop is so extra that they die all the time because everything else in Warhammer is even worse. Yeah, that's the nature of the, sit the sitting. The, the world isn't a nice place. Hey, well, it's not nice in our current timeline, let alone in the, you know, space timeline that is Warhammer 40k. They are a perfectly ridiculous creation from Games Workshop, and there are absolutely... I know, I think the perfect ridiculous creation is the orcs. Just basically, the orcs. Like, I don't think there's an incarnation of the orcs that doesn't beat anything ridiculous. That's the, the most ridiculous thing. I think the space marines are somehow treated seriously. Well, in fact, they are treated seriously, like the Eldar or the Tau, for that matter. Ah, no, the orcs are the only ones. But, so we're already starting good, right? No girls allowed. But why? Well, the reason is, that's just how the creators of 40k decided it should be 35 years ago. Now they're- And they have kept to that until now. Yes, they have made that decision, they have kept to it. Look, one thing that we're still holding on to. Traditions. I love them. There are some that would claim that Games Workshop did in fact sell some female Space Marine models, but that's actually not true. What they're thinking of is way back in the day, in Rogue Trader, Games Workshop's first edition, they sold a line of miniatures called Adventurers. And in that line, there were two characters, Female Warrior Jane and Female Warrior Gabs. They are wearing Space Marine power armor and carrying bolt guns and power swords, so it could be argued they are Space Marines in all but name. But they weren't big sellers, and so they were never rolled into 40k proper. He, he surprisingly, he does make an interesting point. He does, he, he's not going for the, oh, they existed in the past and they didn't sell those whole lies that Alan Merritt would just contradict himself later on. So at least he has that. They were not Space Marines, uh, but they were not... What's wrong with me? 
They were proto sisters of battle. The sisters of battle have existed exactly since Rogue Trader. It was a nun warrior in power armor with all that. And it could be argued as the same thing without the headscarf thing. And, well, it kinda is the same thing. Proto sisters of battle, if you may call them that. Along with most of the adventurers line of miniatures. So female space marines don't exist, but they will soon because I'm going to make some. And a little while later, I'm going to get into why some people might want women in their space marine armies, and the arguments for and against Games Workshop retconning them into the lore. I Boy, retcons are cringe. Don't, don't even try to make retcons for that. Retcons are just cringe, there's no... Yeah, retcons. Awful. I have the perfect thing for this project, a kilt... I'm not sure if I should watch him build stuff, because I don't really care about other people's kid bashing. Though, a good friend of mine, or should I even say friend? Somebody I follow did make the argument that certain people are making their miniatures extremely politicized because of that. So, eh, take it with a grain of salt. If you want to consider it all they're doing this just for virtual points or whatever, or they just really want to do it. Pick your side, I don't, I couldn't care less. I mean, I could, but, you know. ...team of Space Marines, the coolest Space Marines, the Death Watch Space Marines. And these gals recently received a buff, they can now take a sixth member of the team. So I gotta get this gal painted up, and then it'll be time to get some Lady Space Marine heads on all of these. The first step in the easiest black space... I think I could just skip this, because, again, I don't really care to watch him build the minis. And to be honest, I'm not much of a person that watches other people paint. Is he done now? Can I just play? It? And I think they turn out pretty slick. I almost collected an army of these guys, but there's only room in my heart for one Black Power Armored Space Marine chapter, and that is the Black Templar. Based. Ah, that's a pretty based chapter. Let's see if you can match its baseness then. Now it's time for that power sword and I love only got green on this color. I take the Then I'm going to go with all this space marines where there can be a touch. The rest I all unique death the rest of the marines. Well that is a great reason. Whether you think female represents for creating ladies as the rest of the armor. Whew, the bodies are done. It's time to turn these space marines into lady space marines. But first why would anybody want to do this? What are the arguments for creating female space marines? Well, I am expecting none of them to be good. Well, let's I see. think the best and most important answer is because you think it'd be cool. That is a great reason. Whether you think female representation is important, more diversity might give you more painting and modeling opportunities, or you just want some power clad babes to simp over, I think it's fine. Because it's cool is the only excuse you need to do whatever you want to your miniatures. So what it's your money, you're wasting it away. I said that before. I think I said it during the Templin Institute thing and also when I responded to One Mind Syndicate. It's your money, you can wash the way however you want. At the end of the day, it doesn't really affect me or other people that are in it. Ah, great. Now I just deformed What are the arguments? against female space marines because there's a few i keep hearing i would say the big one is it's impossible for women to receive the gene seed and be turned into space marines yes that is true so putting aside the fact that the space marine creation process is pure magic i have no it's not in fact that's the interesting part because the process of creating space marines is pure science 40k science because 40k is its own universe, it has its own rules, and its own way of working. That's how it's always been. That's like arguing, um, let's see, that doesn't make sense that uh, only a few races could be paladins in World of Warcraft. Oh, why can't all the races be paladins? <laughs> because by the way the world works, not all races can be paladins. Simple. Internal logic. World building. Isn't it great? It is. I've read every single Space Marine Codex ever published, and nowhere does it actually say it's impossible to give the gene seed to women. Only that it's only been given to men. Do you want me to get the great book? You know what? Let's pause this for a minute. So I'm back, and I got the great book. Sitting right next to... what was it? 
I have some books in Romania. To the Prince by Machia Machiavelli and to Letters to Lucilius by Seneca is the greatest book of all. Warhammer the Horus Heresy, Age of Darkness. And let's see what it says here at page 31. The process of initiation. The process by which space marines are created relies inherently on the hormonal and biological makeup of the human male, meaning that only males can be subjected to the transformation. And that's all the proof you need that's only males. And sure, you could say that because it's only been given to men, it's impossible to put it in women. But allow me to quote the lore. A quote from my man, Malkador the Sigilite. Oh, really? It's going to be the awful one, right? Uh, you know what? Points given. Few have brought up Malkador and his dumb quotes to Dorn. Who am I? I'm the greatest. Who am I? I'm getting paid. Who am I? I'm so Malkador fake. smiled. You brothers, such a nest of rivalries. I warned him, the Emperor, to make you sisters, that it would make things more civilized. He thought I was joking. I wasn't. That quote means nothing. Remember, I just quoted the great book, the greatest of them all. Malkador just thinking he knows better than the Emperor doesn't prove a thing. In fact, Malkador did not know better than the Emperor. A hero as he may be, he did not. If the Emperor's BFF and the smartest human to ever exist in all of 40k says it would have been possible to create female Primarchs, then certainly it is possible to create female Space Marines. No. Not. The process is entirely different. Space Marines are based on their Primarchs. Melkador did not help the Emperor create them. Let's remember that point, because eh? that's an interesting one. Malkador did not help the Emperor to create the female Space Marines. Or the female, the, the Primarchs, excuse me. What the hell am I talking about? Hi, yeah. Anyway, Malkador did not help the Emperor create them, right? There's that whole Erda story that Erebus was, has done one thing right, and that's dealing with Erda. That's besides the point. Malkador was not there. Malkador does not know what he's speaking. He might be the smartest person on Earth, the biggest psyker out there. He has no clue what he's talking about this. That's why the Emperor laughed it off as a joke. So, moving on to argument number two, some might claim that, sure, it's not necessarily impossible for female space marines to exist, but it would destroy 35 years of established lore. Well, yes, indeed. Very much so. And that's like one of the biggest arguments. Not only has it been proven in this the great book, it has proven it hasn't been done time and time again. Let's be honest, you don't want to destroy the core things of what you've created. Look at Warcraft. Warcraft is destroying its main things because the writers are having a power trip and they hate the old Warcraft. That was cool. Besides the point. You keep to your traditions. They've been constant with this for 35 years, as you say. Remember that? 35 years, they've maintained this lore and they have proven it in this marvelous book. All to that, I would say, no, it doesn't. Sure, Space Marines are... I just said, I know I'm acting like I'm talking to a real person and not the video, but again, it does. ...are a brotherhood, but not really. In the codexes, Space Marines are described as psycho-indoctrinated super soldiers who know nothing but warfare. But when you crack open any 40k novel, you find out Space Marines are just people with their own... Um, yeah, they're humanized. They have emotions, ambitions, and whatever... Ambitions. You get it. I mean, ambitions work sometimes, but whatever. Yeah, because they are humanized. That, that's their whole appeal. They seem like these cold, feeling machines. They're still human, indoctrinated or not, turned into this or not. Most of them by their own volition. I think all of them by their own volition. They are still human, and that's why they seem human when you crack a 40k book, because they're humanized. Also, thanks to them being the main faction. That's why they're humanized. It helps you relate more with characters like Slaughter, like Loken, like Sigismund, like Garrow, 
because they are humanized. Or else you would probably get a book about killing machines, which would still be metal and cool. But at the end of the day, they would lose that important aspect that really makes them relatable. Because that's what it counts. That's why they're humanized, to be relatable. Sure, they are killing machines, but the same way you're not just a painter, you're also a person that, I don't know, likes golf or Formula One. That's a cool sport. You see where I'm going with this? They're more than just that. that that's what the books represent. Your own thoughts, feelings, and opinions on things. The Horus Heresy series is a 50 novel epic about space marines having a lot more humanity and free will than the Emperor planned for. Humanity. Not really. <laughs> the end. Okay, this new book, The End and the Death, really messes things up a little, but. Kinda the Emperor expected some to fall to chaos, kinda not. Yeah, it's a mess. But I would think that he made them independent. Like, one of their main purposes is to be independent. Gulliman, as much as he tried to make them unified in something, he still put that whole thing with theoretical practical to make them independent, to make them think. They were never created to be mindless. Not man. Nanity. It that was just a bad joke. What the? Hi, uh... If women were introduced in the Space Marine stories, nothing would really change. Except instead of five times a page, I read a Space Marine proclaim brother, two of those might be sister. Except it would change because remember, it's already established in this book that I read to you right now that they are only male. And here's an interesting aspect, and it's one that I really like discussing because their whole story of this, even the whole, let's go Horus Heresy. The whole, the Horus Heresy is the best one. It's a conflict between sons and fathers. Loki against Horus, Horus against the Emperor, the traitors against their Primarchs. You're getting it. It's a relationship between son and father and the way it develops and it works when different types of personalities moment you introduce a woman in it, a woman in it, it changes. Because the relationship between men change when a woman, when a, yeah, when a woman is involved in them. Understand where I'm going? It wouldn't have the same impact. The Horus Heresy wouldn't be as impactful if you just started adding female space marines to it. Since that destroys the Horus Heresy, guess what it also destroys? The Brotherhood and bonds and desperations that happen in current Timeline 40k. See? It's all connected. Though I've seen idiots say that Horus Heresy and 40k are different things. Couldn't be more fake than that. Relationship change. And that doesn't really change the story for me. They probably don't understand much of that story. Which I'm not surprised. If it doesn't change it for you, then you don't understand it. And we're not talking about some epics with deep hidden meaning in them. We're not talking Albert Camus the Stranger here. I'm talking basically action books. Pulp books, if you want. The third argument against female space marines is kind of an interesting one. It's that female space marines actually already exist, and it's the Sisters of Battle, so you should just... Yes, if you want women in power armor or woman representation, we got the Sisters of Battle and the Sisters of Silence. Eldars, you can say all your Eldar troops are women, same with the Tau. Your Imperial Knights can be Tau, all of them. If you have an army of Imperial Knights, which would be cool, but you get where I'm going. You have options for representation. You just don't want them. Just collect that. And I would say that's a bad argument. Space Marines are incredibly diverse, with a huge variety of modeling opportunities. So are the Sisters of Battle. If it doesn't seem like that, it's mostly due to a skill issue. I, don't, I never liked this argument, and it always seems stupid to me to act, oh, but um, <clears throat> Space Marines are so moddable and stuff, and you can make them however you want. Yeah, you can do the same with any model in this. This isn't even a Games Workshop or Warhammer problem. You can do the same 
with any model out there if you have the skill to do it. And let's be honest, it's not hard to make unique models. Take it for example, Kings of War. You can always modify a few bits and pieces and change the way your army looks in Kings of War. The same way you can do with Sisters of Battle. It's a skill issue at this point. Get good. Your space marines can be Vikings, they can be medieval knights, they can be ninjas, they can be I like how he says ninjas and puts a raven guard up there. Whatever. So can your sisters of battle. You just have to want to do it. Be blue, they can be vampires. Where if you want to collect a sisters of battle army, unless you want to kit bash and convert 90% of your miniatures, they're going to be corseted ecclesiastical babes with bob cuts. I mean, Blade World Games Workshop for the bob cuts. Though it does make sense why they're white haired. <laughs> or why you would make them white haired. But yes, you can convert your army. Good thing. Bravo. Now most of the armies look kind of the same. Here's the biggest problem. Even Space Marines are becoming uniform as... Uniform, whatever. They're all starting to look alike. Thanks to the Primaris. But the Primaris are an issue that we'll discuss at a later date, another time. And a better day, should I say. Again, we're in the same position. Kid bashing. Sculpting. You still need to do that to make your Space Marine army unique. Thanks to the fact that all Primaris work on all chapters. And the specific models for each chapter are getting less and less out there. Take a look at the best tactical squad box that Games Workshop ever made. The Blood, Mar Blood Marines. The Blood Angels tactical squad. It was an amazing box. And out of that box, you could have made yourself normal, regular Space Marines. And you had enough beast bits and pieces to make... Uh, what was it called again? I forgot. The whole thing where they put them in the Black Rage. <laughs> uh, shows how big of a Blood Angels fan I am. Uh, the, those death squads. I'm just going to call them that. Right now, this is the problem that plays Games Workshop overall. It's not only related to the Sisters of Battle. So again, skill issue. And I can totally understand somebody saying that they want women in their armies, but not that. So with all that said, should Games Workshop bite the bullet and introduce female Space Marines into 40k? No. I'll get to my thoughts on that, but first I want to finish these Space Marines. <coughs> and I had a heck of a time finding a pro- It's a good marketing strategy. You see it on most people that want to sell you stuff. Especially people on YouTube that uh, want to sell the key to success to gain 100,000 subscribers. Oh, and other stuff like that. It's a marketing ploy, but what can I say? Appropriate heads. Regular human heads from Games Workshop are plentiful kit bash fodder, but unfortunately are way too small for Space Marines. Leagues of Otan heads are actually close bad a battle damage from under then yeah, they they were looking so they and I care. did a little more started in the last end. Big ol' forehead, big ol' cheekbones, stretch those highlights all the way to the ears, and then get darker the further up and down you go. On these faces, try to make them look a little bit more feminine, I and the chin. Well, that was anything for the ball rears. Probably the bases. Necron Tomb World bases. I prefer one month. Perfect for all the Necron. This left neck pointing up to the legs, the went they have bases. Which might the perfect, not officially can't just shoehorn women into the Astartes. Or Another kill team done. Okay. This might be my favorite kill team. Certainly my most unique kill team. These ladies are the perfect kill team. In fact, they're all bald. They're all bald with that man cut. In fact, the Death Watch called their squads of Space Marines kill teams. Bus cut, I think it was called, yeah. Throw a ball over the bus cut. My ladies are not officially canon the way that I've made them, more just a fun novelty. And you know what? I don't think Games Workshop should just shoehorn women into the Astartes randomly after 35 years. It'd feel too easy and not give this achievement the prominence it deserves. I think they're. I mean, it's not an achievement, it's pissing away 35 years of lore in books and. a book that has been recently released that I read from. I'm sorry, I have to bet this because this is important. There's a better way, a spikier way, a more chaotic way. 
Oh no. If the Emperor couldn't do it, neither can Fabius Bile. Let's be honest. Call took like 10,000 years to just do something that the Emperor already had plans for. And that way is Fabulous Bill. Fabius Bile, the primogenitor, the clone lord. He's been hard at work for 10,000 years trying to create his own superior space marines. And he has failed numerous times, with only his biggest success being cloning his Primarch, which is an interesting aspect that I wish Games Workshop would explore at least a little, give us something with that, because it's cool. Fulgrim was interesting as a character before he fell to chaos. But even then, when he was possessed. Nevertheless, I'm getting ahead of myself. And one day, he will do it. And how can Games Workshop... Or not, or he might die before that. I'm just joking. ...prove that his Space Marines are better than the original Space Marines by allowing men and women twice the recruitment pool. Useless, he can't do that. As much as you try, the science isn't there, and Fabius Bell does not have the mind of the Emperor or his abilities to do that. You see? He lacks everything that the Emperor had. The Emperor couldn't do it, so neither can Fabius Bell. It's logic. Right? If Arnold Schwarzenegger couldn't lift, well, let's say, a truck, and do squat with it on his back. What makes you think you can do it? Exactly. Skill issue. Cool. His super people would swarm across the galaxy and bring the Imperium of Mankind to its knees. Okay. Cringy chaos, edge boy. Chaos Space Marines aren't burdened by the ideas of honor and tradition. All they care about is... No, but they're bound by the rules of the universe that already say... No. And if Games Workshop wanted to bring women into the ranks of the Astartes, I think that is how they should do it. And us hobbyists still have the option to hobby however we want. It was awful. I'm gonna be honest, it was awful. Tremendously so. But, there's a but here. It was awful, it makes no sense in uh, lore. But still, it wasn't as bad as the Templin Institute. At the end of the day, the Templin, I don't think that somebody can be worse than the Templin Institute. Well, I already have two people in mind, but that doesn't matter. It wasn't as bad as the Templin Institute. Still wrong. Everything. Though he has some correct points that he mentioned, at least he didn't fall for Oh, female space springs always used to be a thing and then they were in Rogue Trader, but it didn't sell, no. Sisters of Battle. It even writes sister on their base thing, on their thing that get, goes into the base that's glued to their legs. Sisters of Battle. That's it. Yeah, it's still a horrible argument at the end of the day. There's... You can't really bring them in. And sure, good games workshop piss on everything and lose millions in this? They could, but... The same way, the same way you know not to put your hand in the fire, so does Game Modes Workshop know not to burn themselves. Because they've tried that before and didn't end well. Not the female Space Marines, but burning themselves in the process. Remember that whole campaign for the Black Crusade? That was a doozy. So overall, no. There's no way to bring female space marines in. All arguments for it are baseless and really they make, don't make much sense in the lore and the universe. Again, <coughs> space marines are not created by magic but by the science of the world. Everything's based on the world building. Because of that, the world has its own rules by which it operates. That's, they cannot be and there will never be female space marines. I hope you like this. I hope you enjoyed it. I didn't, but that is what it is. I'm gonna make the call for liking, commenting, and subscribing, and, well, what can I say? I'll see you 
in the next one.